I done ripped my glove trying to get the glove on. I am just, <laughs> this is just a hot mess, okay. Welcome to my channel, people. I'm Brandy, and today I'm sharing three Christmas tree DIY ideas using mostly Dollar Tree items. And if you've been wondering how to incorporate Dollar Tree's miniature village into your home, this video has such an amazing idea for you. But first, I want to mention this video is part of a playlist for Heidi Sambles DIY Christmas theme challenge. So if you guys have time when you're done watching me, hop on over and check out the playlist with all the other amazing creators. Enough of me rambling. Let's jump to the DIYs. For this idea, you will need a miniature tree from the Dollar Tree and a Santa pants basket. <laughs> you will also need all of these items. And these I purchased from Walmart. They have amazing rustic farmhouse ornaments. If you haven't checked them out, check them out. I love all of them. I decided to cut the ends of this tree off with a miter box and I glued it to the bottom of the Santa pants basket. Then I fluffed out the tree and realized it was kind of sad, but it was also a dollar and I'm not hating on it because if it's a dollar, I'm, I don't hate on things that cost a dollar. <laughs> I purchased them. I am going to add in some extensions, some tree extensions. <laughs> they're the hair extensions for the tree and we're going to fluff them out to give the tree some more poof of course you can use whatever lights you want to put on your miniature tree i'm a fan of fairy lights and i had them laying around so i'm using them then I just started piecing the tree together with the different items that I had on hand and I glued these flowers to the tips. If you don't want to glue the flowers, a little tip that you could use is the little, um, I can't even think of what they're called, the things that you use to tie off your trash bags can't think of what they are but you could glue them to the back of these flowers and use them to wrap around the branches oh they have them on the back of these boats these little things you could glue them <laughs> on the back of the flowers and use them to wrap around the branches now for this part some of you guys are probably going to be like what is she doing but i'm not a huge fan of the black and white buffalo check Mm, yep nope just gonna leave that there so I pulled this <laughs> bell off and I'm gonna just kind of um, toss it <laughs> just kind of toss it off into the far yonder and then I'm going to jimmy rig this <laughs> together because I'm terrible at bows if you guys are not familiar with me I'm terrible at bows I'm using a stapler to kind of pin this together and then I'm just gonna hot glue this ornament in the center and that is going to be my top piece for this little rustic tree these were really long and dangled on top of the other ones so i cut them off and tied them a little bit shorter so that way they would stick a little bit closer to the branch that i placed them on instead of dangling on a branch that was below them depending on how permanent you're trying to make your tree you could also hot glue them. I really like the twine look of the ornaments. It added that extra rustic flair for me. So I kept them, but gluing them would work as well. Then I just added this to the top when I was done, but I forgot the most important piece, the little truck. For this DIY, I used a Happy Holidays Dollar Tree wall sign, some fabric stiffener, silver and gold small twine, and some buttons. I ended up not using the gingerbread pieces I purchased from Hobby Lobby. For the background, I was going for 
a faux fence and decided to try this dap spackling, which worked out really well. And I was super happy about that because I've tried using the dap wood filler in one of my videos for furniture makeovers or flips and it did not work out so well. So I was super happy that this stuff worked out really well. To create the design, I took two pieces of paper to size of the Happy Holidays wall sign and cut them so that way I knew exactly how large I could create the design and then just started twirling. My man's had enough nerve to say that it looked like a child made this and I was extremely offended because I love this piece <laughs> he was like it looked like a child drew it anyhow it's beautiful we're not going to listen to him let's carry on so I took the stiffener and put it each into two different bowls and took the silver and the gold twine and cut some pieces up I ended up cutting these a lot smaller but to be honest with you I really feel like you could take some glue or some Mod Podge and this would work out just fine without having to buy the stiffener I just happen to have this on hand so I figured I would utilize this there's really no right or wrong way to go about spiraling your twine just create whatever type of design that makes you happy and that's all i did here just piece it together like this i can be extra sometimes so i felt let's add some spray adhesive <laughs> once in here while this is drying You will need to sand down the spackling before you start to paint and it came out beautiful by the way it sanded very easy this paint is not my silver linen paint i haven't been able to find any of that for a while i guess it wouldn't have mattered because that's kind of late and i used a darker acrylic gray to mix in i would like for the background of the fence to kind of help the lighter twine pop out there's many different ways or techniques to create the faux fence i just like to use a piece of paper and a dry paintbrush with some dark paint ultimately it took about three hours for this twine to dry and as you can see i had to call for reinforcements to help me get the twine off this paper it was super stiff so the technique did work i was a little sad about the breaking apart you can see the breaking apart but at the end of the day look how stiff this is but at the end of the day i was kind of happy about it because it allowed me to freely move the pieces how i wanted them and switch up some things and tighten the pieces a little bit more so they didn't look so wiggly they look really wiggly i used hot glue to just kind of press everything down to hold it all into place. Instead of the gingerbread pieces, I thought, how awesome, let's add some metal stars. So I took a Dollar Tree cookie sheet and cut little stars. And then I took this Dollar Tree giant bow flower ornament thing and created a little star for the top of my tree that I was creating here. There is no method to this madness. I just put pieces where I thought they would look nice, tried to hide some of the breaks, and I even took some of the glue and tried to tighten some of the strands so they didn't look so wiggly. Then I took some metallic silver paint and added some gold glitter and filled in the tree. 
You do not have to do this step if you do not want to. I just thought how cute it would be to actually kind of see the outline of a tree. I can't see it all the time. I tried to get the outline in the final reveal and then I sealed it with some Mod Podge. <laughs> This is where the video gets a little bit lengthy, people. <laughs> there is no short way around this DIY. You will need four triangular pieces from Dollar Tree and two miniature village houses. Make sure they fit into these triangle pieces. They do not all fit, I know. <laughs> so learn from me. Then you can use essentially whichever items you want to create your inside cubbies cubbies to your triangles these are some of the items that i picked and some of the items i did or didn't use but i wanted to give you guys options to see what you could create as well that i had on hand this is is essential to be able to hang it on the wall these are little hangers i will link them down below for you make sure that when you're hammering this is the top piece make sure that when you're hammering it in you have it in an exact position that it is going to go through the thick wood see how it did not come through if you do not have that precisely on the edges it will come through inside of your triangle next I did the bottom now this entire DIY is going to be done in pieces because everything takes drying time and I wanted to make sure everything was held together really well so I took my time with all of it I would glue these and then held them together quickly for a quick bond with the hot glue but then I put clamps on it and I let each of these dry for 30 minutes after I clamped them and got them into place. If your clamps have struggles like mine do sometimes, you can add on the little hair ties right here and it will hold them just a snug tighter. Just a little tip for you, <laughs> just a snug tighter. Some is from Walmart and the wood pieces are from Hobby Lobby. This is going to create my fake, what is this? Is that the trunk? the fake bottom of the tree it's gonna create the bottom of the tree i really wanted this to look like an amazing wall piece and these really this is probably my favorite part of the tree actually they fit on here perfectly with a little bit of maneuvering <laughs> this is kind of when things really started to go south for me so I'm just going to let you guys experience this. I done ripped my glove trying to get the glove on. I am just, <laughs> this is just a hot mess. Okay. I'm gonna try and do this the best I can without getting more glue all over myself and throwing this away just yet. Oh, that, <clears throat> if it can happen, it'll happen to you, Brandy. It's okay. It might not seem like it, but the overall goal was to use E6000 and the hot glue gun to attach the wood to this foam. It did eventually work, but it took some finagling. For the top part of this, I wanted to create a stand. So I took a wood plank from Dollar Tree and measured it to size and then took a miter box and cut it to size. You could also use a box cutter to score it. I'm sure that would be just fine. I happen to like tools, so any chance I can use a tool, I use a tool. And then I took a piece of 150 grit sandpaper and trimmed up the edges. To attach the top of this to the tree trunk, I tried using the rest of this E6000 and it exploded out the back. No. <laughs> ah! I mean, exactly where did I go wrong? <laughs> 
with this E6000? What did I do to it? I don't even know. The real life struggles of DIYing with me. All real all the time around here. The struggle, oh my gosh. Anyhow, the platform fit. Ultimately, the trunk is completely put together with some E6000 and some hot glue. Then I wanted to conceal these cracks. You guys do not have to do this if that is not something you're interested in, but some methods would be the spackling in a Dollar Tree also sells some cheap spackling. You can use caulk if you have some caulk and you don't have spackling, you can use that as well, or even just layer up some thick paint that will help also so just a couple different ideas if you don't have this available but this dab paint is or dab <laughs> spackling not paint is really cool when it's all dry it's all white and then you can just sand it so while that was drying i thought let's go cut these houses you can this is real simple i made sure to make sure this was slowed down so you guys could see i was not faking any of this i literally saw this and that quickly just two three seconds it already cut down see how simple that is it already cut inside of it literally took me about three minutes to saw both of these houses in half even alternating them i showed you step by step how I alternated the houses inside the miter blocks to get a clean straight cut. Definitely recommend sanding down the edges. It has like little pieces still kind of stuck to the house. So, or the village pieces whichever they're all not houses i think that one was a little shop i just cut up and um they're prickly so you want to make sure that you're sanding them down this piece was a little bit larger but it's still it took me no time at all to do either one of them just be mindful i love tools so i live dangerously do not do as i do be safe use safety measures precautions I purchased this paper from Hobby Lobby for $1.99 and measured it to the size of the back of the triangle box. And to save me from having to do that for each one, I then traced on the back of the paper for the rest of them and then cut them to size. They all fit in there really well at the end of the day. This is a step that is not necessary, but staining things so it all just kind of looks cohesive or matches together well is something that I personally like doing so I decided to stain the platform when the spackle was dry I took some 220 grit sandpaper you do not want to use real coarse sandpaper like an 80 or 100 it will create dents inside of your spackling and cause more work if not just rip all of it and if you apply too much pressure it'll also just rip all the spackling off so a gentle sand with a high grit sandpaper will work out the best it was super windy this day so i used some spray paint to quickly put a primer coat on here then as i was waiting for that to dry i figured let's start on the top of the tree since I'm using this for the centerpiece for my star, I just scored the top. This was tougher than it looked. I don't know what they're making these ornaments out of at Walmart, but it took me several times with some elbow grease to actually get that cut off. I did not like how it looked by itself, so I decided to use some mesh and cut that in little triangle pieces to also mimic a star behind it. It's important 
before you start putting your paper in to Mod Podge. I also use the Mod Podge to attach the paper, but the white paint is also still easy to kind of nick or mess up, especially with the spackling in there. So the Mod Podge helps seal everything. How you want to do your houses is really completely up to you. There are so many different ways that you can accomplish your little miniature village. I like the white idea with the shiny, so I added some glitter, some gold glitter. Plus, I feel like it matched the decorative paper in the background. It was just kind of going with everything. And I do shiny. I do shiny for Christmas. I like shiny. Then I collected all my little pieces that I wasn't sure if I was going to use, but I knew I wanted to use or felt like I was going to use. I wasn't really sure my method. This antler thing was shedding all over everything worse than the gold <laughs> glitter. So I had to calm it down and put some Mod Podge on top of it. The shiny little houses felt a little sad, so adding some red paint gave them just a little bit of happiness. A lot of the paint actually on some of these Dollar Tree items were very smudged and poorly done, so I just touched them up and it took me just a couple minutes. To place the trunk onto the center, you just want to measure either with a ruler or tape measure off to the sides and make sure they are exactly the same width apart. And then I found some E6000, <laughs> the tiniest bottle ever, and used what was left of there, <laughs> what was left, and attached the trunk with some hot glue for some quick bonding. To attach the rest of the pieces, I just used some hot glue. The peace sign actually is not hot glued, it's placed on there. These antlers allowed me the freedom to just kind of wiggle it on there and it stayed, which I thought was amazing because I love options and versatility of things. And if I want to switch that word out next year, I can. Here it is. If you have a drill and a drill bit, I recommend using that over this box cutter. I wanted to show you guys a way to do this for people who do not have those things accessible. Most crafters do have box cutters available and you can just hold it in one spot and spin it in a circle and see it just, it went right through the back of this. And then I just shoved those lights on in the holes. <laughs> Then I took the star and used E6000, the last bit, and hot glue gun and attached it to the top. Thank you so much for joining me today, people. I really enjoy creating these Christmas tree DIYs to share with you. Thank you so much, Heidi, for hosting this challenge. I was so happy that I was able to participate in this today. And here's a little footage of the miniature village at night with the lights. This really is my favorite piece for today. Let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite.
hits and don't forget before you go to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and to subscribe if you want to see more videos with me each like each comment and each subscriber tells youtube to suggest my content until next time bye